Hi there, this is Tracy, and tonight I'm going to talk to you about the number two red flag of, of a narcissist. And um, there are many different versions of this, but it is called um, rushing intimacy, or just falling in love with you so fast. I mean, it's just like you are just bombed. There's not one dozen red roses, there's five. And there is, you know, not one text a day, but there's a hundred. He can't live without you. He's texting you from elevators, from every single place that he is because it's so darn cute. He's driving down the road. He's thinking of you. Maybe he's Snapchatting. Be careful of Snapchatting men that um, don't communicate any other way. Snapchatting men know that all the evidence of their conversations and their, you know, secret I'm waking up in the morning and here's my photo is is going to be gone. So it, it's a lot easier for narcissists to use something like Snapchat. So be aware of that. Um, another thing that you might find them doing is um, liking everything that you have on Facebook. Be careful of that. Um, that's public. Your friends start to notice it. Everybody starts to wonder who is this guy and what's going on and isn't this really fast? Why does he have to comment on every single thing that you do and um, react and then friend your friends? I mean, that's a weird ass freaking thing. Like they haven't even met and, and they start to friend your friends. I am all about, I meet your friends and they meet my friends and we can become friends. That's how the world grows and how we all evolve. But if the person that you're dating hasn't ever met your friends and suddenly just because they're commenting on everything and then your friends start to comment and they start to friend your friends and you have to be really careful of that. Keep in mind that they are slimy and all of this love in the beginning. It's it's not real and it feels real. It feels like you found your knight in shining armor or your princess because they like everything that you like. They they if you like Disney, they like Disney. If you like this, they want to do that. Everything that you do becomes something that they're interested in and you have to be really careful because the odds of somebody actually like liking everything that you do it's just weird. So be careful of um, these rushing intimacy things. The man that I just left, um, he had a key to my apartment within about three weeks. And um, I don't even really know how it happened. But in the two and a half years that I was with him, aside from watching his child whenever he went away, um, I'd never had a key. I never had my own key. Um, but for him, he had to have my key. Rushing intimacy um, is, a, is a red flag that obviously happens at the beginning, but you really have to question it. And I don't think that it's not true that you can't fall in love at first sight, but look for the other signs. Look for the other things that we're gonna teach you about and that you can look up on YouTube. There are some amazing resources and the people that I have begun to follow are like lifelines for me. I, I never knew this existed and of course after I, I found that narcissism and um, sociopaths existed, I began to wonder how exactly have I picked two in a row? I thought that my divorce from my second husband was wildly like the worst in the world. How could someone be so cruel? No one understood it because he was Prince Charming. Um, rushing intimacy with him was very intense. He, um, he lived with his parents. He moved out. We owned a house together within six months. I was, um, you know, fresh out of a divorce and um, he gave me the family that I wanted. He gave my son the father and, and the um, security that I was looking for and he gave me everything I wanted and he also tried to change me. That was something that came later but um, in the beginning that rushing of intimacy was so intense and um, really made me feel like a princess. The, my friends actually called him a prince because he was a knight in charming armor. Everybody loved him.
both number two and three that we're talking about in this series were so charming and so lovable. And you loved them and you hated them. Um, I don't think that, that my husband and I was married to for 10 years. Um, I didn't see the narcissistic side. I didn't know any of these, these um, red flags, but I didn't see it until I went through the divorce. And, and he was crazy. It, it was the worst. But um, I see all of the signs now, now that I know them. I, I went in pursuit to find this out for number three and find out I wasn't married to him, but find out like what the hell happened. And the truth is, as I read and I watched and I learned on YouTube and I learned from amazing people that this is all kind of their pattern and we, we I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> um, these guys are sick and I know that there are women that are narcissists so I don't want to start the series um, not remembering that men are victims as well. Um, I did not want to say that I'm a victim. I did not want to say that um, I, I was at fault, but I, that's what I was going to say was I, um, I know now how I was at fault and my fault is um, that I'm a codependent and I didn't even know what that meant. Uh, no one ever understood how I was the only one in my family that um, didn't have mental problems and um, no one understood how I survived. How did you become successful? How did you get a job? How did you have a child? Um, nobody really understood it. I think it's it's all due to this codependent role that I took on when we were younger and I'm, I'm never looked, I always had my head in the sand, I never looked at my childhood. I, I, I just buried it and then I just went about my life. I wasn't going to use that as an excuse to hold me back. And in burying it, I didn't know that, that the people I was selecting in my life were narcissists like my mother. And um, my mother just passed and I love my mother. I think she did the best she could. She did not have a mother. Her mother was murdered in front of her when she was nine. Now that I look back and, and now that she's gone, I think I'm free to, to see more about myself. And I'm doing a lot of work, a lot of coaching, a lot of therapy. And um, I'm really trying to understand my role in life, not just in this. It's, it's how do I pick the people? How do I keep them in my life? And... Um, when you're codependent, you don't want to hurt anyone. And when someone shows you attention, um, you take it for exactly how you would show attention and, and how you would give love. Someone that's giving you that much, you know, love bombing in the beginning and rushing intimacy right after that, you just think, wow, this is great. I'm, in, I'm so happy I found my dream. But it's never a dream. And most of the time, what I am finding is it's a nightmare. And your friends are not going to understand. They are going to blame you. They're going to call you crazy. They're going to say that, you know, you were in it and he was so happy. You guys were so happy. Everything was fine. You know, and, and almost blame you when, in fact, it's something that you just don't know what happened yourself. You're sitting here and you're just wondering, what did I do? What just happened? Um... Why am I so lucky? Why do I, unlucky, why do I keep picking the same people? Why is it that um, I'm taking less than I deserve? Because I do deserve a lot. And I thought if I just loved them enough that I would change them. And um, maybe not change them so much, but help them. Can't help them, can't change them. And um, you have to listen to their actions much more than their words. They're charmers, they're con artists. And so when they say something, it is not real. And the only proof that we're ever going to have about that is to look at what they do, not what they say. And if I had looked at what they've done and not made every single excuse, because they had the excuses. Oh, I went through a terrible divorce. Oh, I didn't know better. Oh, whatever it is, it's bullshit. 
I spoke to three exes, ex-wife, and he did the exact same thing to her. And that was another thing he triangulated about, was making me against her so that we would never talk, so that I would never find out the truth. And he didn't win that one. And I have no regrets about talking to that woman. And I am thankful that I, I learned the truth. And I don't think that many people approve of that decision that I made. But it's my choice. This is my life. I am the one crying every freaking day for a month. I am the one sitting here and afraid to go outside, afraid to see my friends, um, feeling isolated, alone, scared, and I'm making a video in my living room by myself. And that's weird by itself. I spend all day long listening to YouTube videos. Um, all day. I work and then in the car on my way to places. I just plug in my iPad to my speakers and I listen to another video. And um, there's, there's some really good people out there. And I'm going to put the link in the bottom down here to who I recommend highly for you to get more information. I'm a newbie at this. I am like raw as raw can be. I am not healed. I do not understand it. I have so much therapy ahead of me, um, but I'm not gonna take this sitting down. I am not gonna let another person ruin my life. The thing that, that I'm guilty of is, is loving the wrong people. Not understanding the difference, just like my mother. She didn't understand what love is. She didn't know how to be a mother. And this is the only way that I knew how to love. And I was victimized for it. And I feel like I'm being re-victimized by some of my friends who have judged me. And um, I'm here to tell everybody that you didn't do anything wrong. And um, if you lose some friends because of being in a narcissistic relationship and maybe falling apart like so many of us have, um, that you're not alone and, and maybe those friends weren't really good friends. Think about it. You're in this narcissistic relationship with psycho man or psycho woman and you've endured abuse. You've endured it over and over and you didn't even know it. Rushing intimacy, love bombing, these are the first two and we're going to keep on going because there are so many that you need to know about. And um, this is my story. These are true stories of the two narcissists that I have been with. And I am a recovering um, narcissist abused person. <laughs> I don't even know the proper terms because it's so new. And I hope and I pray that if there's any way that my stories mean anything to you or can make something that I said relate to what you're going through, it's all that matters. And so peace be with you and I will talk about red flag number three tomorrow.